Upon these pages, words appear to spin a tale of fright and fear. As our tale unfolds, your blood will freeze. So please excuse the knocking knees. Will it be chilling, thrilling, or gory? Listen now as I read the story. Some see work as never-ending, a poor investment of life they're spending. But if beyond one's fence were to be seen, they might not find the grass so green. Don't, don't worry. I'm not here for you. The pale horse is in the shop getting new shoes. They didn't have a loaner, so since I've still got a job to do, and teleporting gets me only so far before I get nauseous, I'm stuck taking the train. No rest for the wicked and all that. Now that I know you're not here for me, I know this may sound odd, but it's a pleasure to meet you. Well, that's not something I hear every day. I guess you could say we're colleagues after a fashion. I'm a mortician. A mortician, huh? But I wish I had your job. Really? I was going to say the same about yours. Really? If you don't mind me asking, what is it about my job that Death himself would find it so appealing? I imagine it might be nice having a quiet job, when your clients are already at peace. I thought ferrying folks to the afterlife would be a rewarding gig. You know, helping people on the worst day of their lives. Showing them it's not all that bad. But it turns out to be more of a hassle than it's worth. Alan Corbin? It's time. No, please. I need more time. Hey, I'm rich. I'm worth billions. What if I gave you half of all my wealth and assets? Where we're going, money is useless. That's fine. I'll convert it all into traveler's checks. My heart! Fran Rizzo, it's time. But I just got my beauty salon off the ground. Would it comfort you to know your sister will do a fine job running your business for you? No, like you said, it's my business. I want to run it. Tell you what. You let me live another ten years and all your facials are free. Well, do we have a deal? Seriously? You don't see the irony in what you offered me just now? Okay, okay, fine. At least I tried. Viraj Chana, it's time. That's Dr. Chana? Not anymore. But why me? I have so many patients who are barely holding on to life. And your colleagues will take good care of them. I don't care who's going to care for them. I mean, take one of them instead. I understand your frustration, but why look for a job that's still steeped in death? Why not a change of pace? Because I'm also a realist. Do you think I'd fit into any other job with a mug like this? Can you imagine? Hello, and welcome to Bank Breakers Coffee. Would you like to try our new flavor? Mochaccino, bean burrito, odi floaty, artichoke, uh, latte? <laughs> ah, man. That's the third one this week. Hey, you gonna pick that up? 
I am a barista now. Ferrying the dead to the afterlife is no longer my problem. Don't look at me. I'm not picking that up. It's bad enough I have to follow idiots around all day to make sure they don't die looking at their phones while walking into traffic. <laughs> oh, for the love of... See what you did by distracting me? I think you'd better quit this job and get back to what you're good at. Clean up on aisle 666. <laughs> nah, I think a mortician might be the job for me. Which begs the question, why would you want my job? As you said before, I imagine it's much more gratifying helping people cross over. In my business, I don't only prepare the dead for burial, I have to deal with their living relatives as well. Really? Funerals don't pay for themselves. I feel I must remind you, before presenting my estimate, that many of your requests are highly unusual and very expensive. I understand. I will spare no expense when it comes to my dear, precious Morty. Very well. Here you are. Are you nuts? This price is ridiculous. How much to just... Flush him down the toilet. Well, it would have to be a rather large toilet. At the funeral, can you have my mother sit up in the coffin and make her arm move? Like she's waving? Oh, or have her point at my brother while shaking her head. He'd totally freak out. Are you sure you'd like an open casket? Why do you ask? Though his smile is radiant, having seen the body, it looks like the truck that hit your father numerous times was rather large. My father died at home of natural causes. Okay, so that last one's on me. But you should have seen the man. Oh. I know who you're talking about. Simon Cussler. By the looks of him, even I thought he was already dead when I got there. You remember him? Clear as a bell. But it had nothing to do with his mortal appearance. It was after I... shucked his soul from its shell that things got interesting. Well... I guess that's that, Liam. You okay? You look like you've seen a ghost. Oh, that would be me, wouldn't it? <laughs> Your face? Hey, you're no cover model yourself, mister. <laughs> I'm sorry, but... I know, I know. I wasn't much to look at when I was alive. I've got my parents to thank for that. They... They weren't happy people. It's not that. I mean, the scars are gone. But, well, usually when I free a soul, they choose to appear as a much younger version of themselves. And betray a lifetime of fond memories? My wrinkles are the roadmap of my life. They show me where I've been and remind me of all the meaningful stops along the way. But you got rid of the scars. Don't need them. Those scars were much more my parents than they were ever mine. They're not my baggage to carry. Never were. I'm surprised you're not angry with all they put you through. I learned early on we've got but two choices in life. Choose to be miserable, or choose to be happy. Now, self-pity is about as useless as rubber lips on a woodpecker, and holding the grudge is only ever bad for the person holding it. So I chose happiness every time. It made the good times great, and the bad times, not so bad for long. You're wise beyond your years, Simon. Make sure you tell that to my wife when it's her time, will you? <laughs> he thanked me for my time, and crossed with a smile. It must have been the same smile he was wearing when they brought him in. There was such peace and quiet joy in it. I made sure his funeral was reverential, 
but more joyous than usual. Not many mourners go for that, but his family and friends did. His daughter came to see me after the viewing. I just wanted to thank you for making this exactly what his family and friends needed. I'm happy I could help honor his life, but I am sorry for what I said about his face. It's okay. I understand. I often forgot how horrifying his scars looked to strangers. For those of us who knew him, we never saw him. He taught us we all have scars, whether they're visible or not. We can choose to hide them and live in quiet misery, or we can share them, open up about them, and learn we're not so alone in the world. As you can see by today's turnout, no one felt alone around him. Your father was a wise man. If he was here right now, he'd ask you to repeat that in front of my mother. <laughs> Knowing his sense of humor, he'd say something like, See, honey, I'm wise too. I'm not just another pretty face. <laughs> a day later, I witnessed the most joyous funeral I've ever coordinated. I guess... I guess my job isn't so bad after all. Funny. I was just thinking the same about mine. I think I'll stick with it a while longer. Me too. Say, you want to go grab something to eat? I hear the dining car's got a great spread. You eat? Nah. I just like freaking people out when they watch me try and eat a sandwich. The story ends. The tale is told. The grave awaits. It's growing cold. When life seems all too much for you, the dead can teach a thing or two.